Hello everybody, MD Polo here. Thank you for joining me. Today we take a look at Bull Armory's Cherokee Compact in 9mm. This is another polymer pistol that is a CC clone, a CC75, like I said, in 9mm manufactured by Bull Armory in Israel. It comes with a 3.66 inch barrel and 17 capacity, 17 round capacity plus one in the chamber, and it comes with two metal mags. To give you an idea of the sizing, it is very similar to a Glock 19X or a Glock 45. It is a pistol that the format is of a longer and grip area and a shorter slide. So the dimensions looking at into it, it's going to be 7.7 inches in total length. Width is going to come in at 1.27 inches. Let you take a look at there. The height of the pistol comes in at 5.5 inches, like that, with a mag included. The weight comes in at 25.7 ounces. And as a comparison, again, with the Glock 19X, the Glock 19X comes in at 22.05 ounces. So a little bit heavier on the Bull Armory Cherokee Compact. The manufacturer suggested retail price, MSRP, comes in at $575. But as a reflection of times, with a scarcity of firearms, ammo that is happening at the end of 2020 when we're filming this, locally you can find it for $650. Now, keep that nugget of information in your brain to the end of the video because we're gonna, we're gonna talk about something in which price is a relevant part of the decision-making process for this pistol. It is a hammer-fired, double action, single action, and we're gonna start taking a look at it from the top of the slide. And let the focus catch up a little bit with us. And the slide is black oxide steel. It comes with rear serrations, which are very positive. You don't have a lot of room here because it's got a low slide, low bore axis on the slide, typical of a CZ. So there's not a lot of real estate up here to grab for racking the slide, whatever you need to do up there. But the serrations that are there are very deep and they're a little bit on the sharp side. It's not gonna cut you, but if they really do their job well, no front serrations whatsoever. Looking at the top on the slide, you got three dot sight system. The three dots are not night sights, which is regular three dot system, but you can get it. They do make it available. They charge a little bit more for that option, but you can get it with night sights. It is a ramped up sight, so there's no ledge to do any tactical manipulations, whatever you need to do there, one-handed manipulations. I'm letting you take a look at it. And by the way, this pistol has been safety checked, but I'll do it one more time just to be Extra careful, nothing there. And since the mag is out, let's take a look at the mag. I'm not sure who makes them, there are no markings anywhere, but they're nice quality metal mags with a rubber base plate and orange followers. Now, if you have a good eye for detail and you say, my gosh, that looks kind of like, like a baby eagle, you are correct. Bull Armory manufactures the Baby Eagle for Magnum Research. So that's why you see some of the similarities. Let me take a look at it one more time. Sticking with the slide, if you take a look at the top of the slide, you're gonna see that you have three serrations that go the length of the barrel to help minimize glare. Going down to the barrel, taking a look at the barrel, I'm not gonna disassemble it because like I said, this is not my pistol. And also, it is not clear to me, but apparently YouTube's ever-changing and never clear policy or guidelines now don't let us disassemble, show you how to disassemble a pistol because we can get demonetized, get the video demonetized. It's a no-no to show you how to disassemble the pistol. We can show it already taken apart, but not the process to do so. But if you know CZ, CZ clones, you know what you need to do back here. Then you press there, pop it out, 
and you disassemble it like any other pistol. So let's just letting you walk around. The hammer, it's, it's got serrations all around the top of it. So it's not going to slip anywhere. You're going to be able to get a very positive, very positive control of it. Move, moving down to the frame, it is of course a, a polymer frame. And this being a double action, single action, it's got a safety that engages there, is very positive as you can hear there. And it's you, you gotta push it, you gotta mean you gotta mean it when you push it up or when you push it down. It's not gonna happen by accident, that's good. The slide stop, slide release, it's actually quite heavy right now. Um, I hope that it's something that would work itself a little bit looser as a gun gets a little gets some rounds downrange through it. You got a three slot pick rail up here for any accessories you want to hang. Now I'm gonna take a guide you through or show you, I'm sorry. One of the first complaints that I have about this pistol, and I hope it's coming through in the camera, but some, pol some polymers look more plasticky than others, and some look less expensive or less quality than others. I would say this is halfway down the road. For example, when you look at a, one of the polymer pistols by HK, a VP9, or some of the polymer pistols that they make, the polymer just looks good. The polymer looks classy, per se. It doesn't feel or look cheap. I'm not gonna call this one cheap, but when you're looking at it, it just, it feels plasticky. It's hard to, I don't know exactly how I wanna express, express that. But the redeeming quality is this grip. If you can take a look at it, it's got very deep finger grooves. Some people like that, some people don't. They happen to fit my hand amazing. I have medium-sized hand, medium-sized gloves, and those the way my fingers sit here, it's perfect. It's one of the most comfortable grips I've experienced lately on a pistol, especially a polymer pistol. Sorry about that white balance jumping all over the place. I'm trying to get the best focus that I can on you. You see it says Bull here from Bull Armory. You got two different textures on the sides. You got a very aggressive, I mean this is very aggressive texture. And in the front, in between the finger grooves, you got kind of like squares that are on the sharp side and very well done. So when you grip this pistol, it's not going anywhere, absolutely anywhere. I'm really, the more I, I handle this pistol, I really like the way it does. And it kind of tapers at the top. You see, it kind of tapers in, and then it flares out a bit with this pronounced beaver tail that it's got here. So your hand really gets in there combined with a low bore axis of this pistol. It just feels great. So that's what I wanted to show you about the grip. The trigger, the tra starting at the trigger guard, is not huge. If you've got big fingers, big mitts, mittens, and especially if you have gloves, this is a tight little space here. Like I said, I got medium sized fingers, and look at the room that I've got, which is not a lot. It's got the typical hook trigger, like a CZ, any most CZ clones, and here is where the grip comes into play, because for me, I, that's one problem that I have with almost all CZs is with this curved trigger and with a regular CZ grip, I have a hard time reaching the trigger in double action. Once we go to single action, it's no problem at all with the CZs and neither is it with this. But in double action, I have a hard time reaching. With a grip the way it is, is designed for the Bull Armory Cherokee, I don't have any problem reaching the trigger, even in double action, and the mag release, which is textured, not oversized, but it does it does its job well. Just ejects it right there. I can reach the controls, I can reach the safety, I cannot reach the slide stop without and slide release without changing my grip, but I can reach the safety, the trigger and the mag release without modifying my grip. And this is something that I have 
it's, it's not usual for me to, to have that on a CZ or a CZ clone. So the trigger, it's coming in at about seven, seven and a half pounds on the double action. And then when you go to single action, it's coming in just north of four and a half pounds. And the reset, there. And then you're instantly on the wall and it breaks. Let's take a look at the double action now. So you got a little bit of travel there, it hits the wall, and then you're gonna have creep, 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 and then it breaks. So it's got a long way, you gotta mean to pull this thing. It's not gonna happen by accident, more than likely, but you gotta mean to pull that thing. It's smooth, although it is very heavy. So where do I see this pistol coming in in the world of the polymer wonders, the, the Wonder 9s? Well, for sure, range fun, for sure, home defense. It's not the most accurate pistol out there from what I've seen. I haven't fired this one, it's not mine. But the accuracy is more than adequate for self-defense. It's not a bullseye gun. So would you buy this? This is one of the questions that I have for you if you wanna put it down in the comment section. At $575 MSRP, $650 in today's market locally, does it make sense when you're looking at, now you're looking at Glock territory, you're looking for CZ, for sure at a CZ 75, uh, you know, a PO7, I'm sorry, you're looking at the uh, P10C. There's a lot of the Beretta APX, which is one of my favorite ones, and it's actually, I just saw them outside at the shop for $350 for the APX Centurion, which by the way, they have two of them right now. You don't see those very often. Early in 2020, there was a rumor that you could find that you could, the price was going to drop to $450, and for a few weeks there, you actually did see them for $450. The rumor was that in, later in 2020, the price was going to drop to $350. That never happened. That would have been at $350. This pistol is a steal. At $450 to $500, well, now you've got competition. You've got the APX, like I mentioned, and you also have the Masada. The Masada is one of my favorite pistols at that price range, and I think it represents tremendous value for the money. Would I pick this or the Masada, for example? Probably not. I would have to shoot this and fall in love with it, but would I pick it against the, versus the APX? Again, it would have to be something very special because I love the way the APX shoots. That's where I would get stuck with this one. Under $450, maybe. $650, probably not. But I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Do you own it? Have you shot it? What do you think about this and where does it fit? Please remember that I upload videos every Friday morning. And when my schedule allows, I try to do them on Wednesday morning as well. I am very active on, in, on my Instagram account, and there you can see things that are new and what's coming down the pipeline for the channel. So if you'd like to stop around there and give me a follow, I would very much appreciate it. Thank you again for watching. Thank you to Point Blank for making this available to me. And until the next time, God bless.